I hope you are doing fine wherever you are, and I am glad that you are here. So, when I started being serious with motion graphics and product animation, I have been coming across many people being interested in knowing exactly how I create my animations. If you have been around this channel, you have seen that I am a huge fan of creating motion graphics and product animations in Blender and After Effects. In this video, I will talk about my workflow. That will elaborate on exactly what I do during creating my animations. I am going to cover everything on, how my preparations look like, the software that I use and how I use the particular software to achieve my results. I will be using some of my previous projects to describe my workflow. Even though I like to put on YouTube my breakdown videos of how I make my animations, I still find the need to make more videos that give more details. Let us begin. Creative Brief a creative brief is a standard document that contains an overview and scope of the project, visuals, style, goals and objectives, target audience, key dates, deliverables, budget, examples of existing designs, and finally, guidance on what to avoid. A creative brief is based on information collected from prior discussions with a client. If you don't have any clients but you want to create animations then you have to do self-directed projects. It means that you need to conduct a discussion within yourself in order to generate an effective creative brief. Organizing a mood board. A mood board's purpose is to capture the ambience of the project with a collection of images, thoughts, color panels, and general design ideas. The goal is to create a visualization of the concept before production to convey the feel of the project. In this project where I created an ad for myself, you can see that I assembled images from the internet that have a style that I wanted my animation to visually have. Creating a storyboard. A storyboard is basically a sequence of sketches or illustrations that map out the scenes planned for a video. You can make the illustrations on sheets of paper or you can use a digital tablet if you have one. In this project of the herbal toothpaste you can see my storyboard, and also you can see some little notes below each sketch that briefly give more information that should be needed during the animation process. Modeling Through the guidance of your storyboard, you will identify what you need to model. I usually put all models in one blend file. If you have basic knowledge in modeling and 3D in general then modeling should not scare you. To make the process more fun just make sure that when modeling you use as much references as possible and apply correct measurements to your models, just to be on the safe side. UV mapping and unwrapping. A UV map is the flat representation of the surface of a 3D model used to easily wrap textures. The process of creating a UV map is called UV unwrapping. The U and V refer to the horizontal and vertical axes of the 2D space, as X, Y and Z are already being used in the 3D space. Once the polygonal mesh has been created the next step is to unwrap it into a UV map. Now to give life to the mesh and make it look more realistic you want to add textures. There is no such thing as a 3D texture, as they are always based on a 2D image. This is where UV mapping comes in, as it is the process of translating your 3D mesh into 2D information so that a 2D texture can be wrapped around it. I usually create scenes. Scenes are these red lines you are seeing here. They are lines that you mark in order to tell Blender where you want the UVs to be unfolded. This may seem like a confusing idea at first, but it's really very simple with time. Texturing and shading. It is the process of putting image textures and colors to models and adding different shades to them. I usually create my image textures in Adobe Illustrator. That is if I want to make icons, labels and vector graphics from scratch. And I use Adobe Photoshop if I want to edit different images I got from the internet in order to make a new texture for my model. Also, in order to apply the images on the UV map, I usually use Snip and Sketch in Windows in order to save an image of that UV map from Blender. I later bring the image into Photoshop or Illustrator and I use it as a guide to lay out the image textures. Therefore, you can only apply those image textures you have created if you did UV mapping and unwrapping properly. This stage of texturing and shading will enhance the look of your models and also how they will interact with light. Shading is so essential in 3D modeling that Blender has a dedicated workspace for it. Animation. This is where the magic happens. I usually break my animation project into different blend files. Each blend file represents a scene as described in my storyboard. I usually set keyframes on location, rotation, and scale, or a combination of the three parameters on objects. I am a huge fan of geometry nodes. I learned that you can set keyframes in geometry nodes, as you can see here. I also add more cinematic movements in my scene by animating the camera. There are many ways of animating the camera, but I am going to show you my way. 
As you can see here, I have two null objects and a camera. The camera is a child of this null object, let's call it null object B, and you can see it's a child of null object A, up here. Null object A, is for rotating both the camera and null object B along left and right. Null object B is for rotating only the camera up and down, then I have to make sure that I switch from global to local, here, so that I can animate the position of this camera along its local z-axis like this. My animations usually have some sort of seamless transitions. To get something like that, you have to set the first and last 20 frames of your scenes to be for transitioning purposes. That is, if scene 1 is ending with a camera rotation from left to right, then scene 2 will begin with its camera rotating from left to right as well. Also, if in scene 1, the camera is moving along the local z-axis towards the objects, then in scene 2, the animation will begin with camera moving towards the objects along the local z-axis as well. Now, to achieve a more satisfying transition you have to ease the keyframes in order to achieve curves like this. If you want to ease keyframes, select the object that has keyframes you want, go to the timeline and press Ctrl plus tab to switch between the timeline and graph editor. Select the keyframes by left-clicking and dragging up. Click on one of the handles and drag left or right. Press X to lock the movement to just be horizontal. Lighting. I use EV in all my animation projects in Blender, but if you have a powerful graphics card always go with cycles because it is way better. But I will show you how to make EV better. First, I add in an HDRI image and reduce the strength to what I need and turn my background to transparent. I like using area lights and point lights. If you want to get sharp shadows then make the size of the area light smaller and the radius of the point light smaller as well. For soft shadows just make the lights bigger. Turn on ambient occlusion, screen space reflections and don't forget to turn on high bit depth under shadows. When using EV you will run into problems with shadows. When that happens, it means that you have to fake things up. Select the light and turn on contact shadows. Adjust the distance, bias and thickness, to where you feel you are getting good results, and this process can be tedious but you have to go through it in order to get good results in EV Render. Exporting the animation. Here on the output I make sure that it is PNG then RGB Alpha is selected. That is if my animation in Blender has no background just like this one, because I do compositing in After Effects. Now, to export your frames, open File Browser by clicking on this icon here, this window will pop up, that will make you navigate to a location where you want the frames to be saved. Make a new directory by clicking this icon that has a plus sign at the top, to create a new folder and give it a name that makes sense. Then down here give a name that will be assigned to the frames. Once that is done you can render out your animation. After rendering out the animation the image sequence will look like this for every scene in the project. Compositing I use After Effects for compositing. Firstly, I import the scenes as image sequences then arrange the scenes in one composition, and rename that composition as frames. As you can see the scenes are put in layers like this and for the transitions, I offset them slightly to overlap one another like this. I animate the opacity so that scenes fade in and out of each other. For color grading, I create an adjustment layer and add Lumetri color effect to it. Here on Lumetri color I don't mess around with every value, but just a few. For backgrounds, I create another composition and name it accordingly. I add a new solid to it, then drag in frames composition from the project panel. For the solid which is the background now, I add to it a gradient ramp effect and adjust the colors. Also during compositing you can add other 2D elements like texts and shapes to complement your 3D work you have done in Blender. Background music and sound effects. I get my audio files from YouTube's audio library. To add sound to my work, I create a project in Premiere Pro then import all the audio files that I would like to use. I create a new sequence and make sure its frame rate matches the main composition in After Effects. To link the After Effects project to Premiere Pro, I create a transparent video, bring it to the timeline, adjust its length so that it matches the one in After Effects, right-click then replace it with After Effects composition. After Effects should also be open with the project in order for it to work well. Now, I drag in my main composition to this new empty composition that has a black solid in it. If I go back to Premiere Pro, the change is already made in real time. And everything I do here in After Effects will affect Premiere Pro as well. Now I can drag background music and sound effects to my timeline in Premiere Pro. Export video. This is the final stage. There are two ways of doing this if you are exporting from Premiere Pro. The first method. Select this panel that contains the timeline. File, Export, Media. This window will pop up. Format should be H.264. 
For preset, since I put my videos on YouTube, I usually go with the preset called YouTube 1080p Full HD, select the output name and path from here, then export. This method does not work in the versions of After Effects CC. The second method is my favorite one, because it works for After Effects projects as well, especially if you don't need Premiere Pro in your workflow. In Premiere Pro, if you have Media Encoder installed, instead of selecting Export, you select Q. That will open Media Encoder and you select this Play button, and your video will be exported. In After Effects, you can export to Media Encoder by first selecting the composition. Go to Composition, then add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. The file will be loaded into Media Encoder and you can have full control of your output by selecting these drop-downs.